Morning. Another day, another real world test. Today we're doing it on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. The new foldable from Samsung that looks remarkably like the last foldable from Samsung. But we're gonna test out this phone and also talk about some of the differences between it and the last model, all while we explore as per the usual. But first things first. Coffee, check. And this is a coffee shop that is also an independent bookstore, as well as a bar at night here in the East Village in Manhattan, aptly called Book Club. Now it's owned by two longtime residents of the East Village who wanted to make the store resemble the quote, spirited and dynamic neighborhood, end quote. From the living room vibes, curated book inventory, to the locally roasted coffee and the New York State craft beers. There's even a backyard to have a glass of wine and enjoy a book in. And while you can work here, they stop laptop usage at 6 p.m. And at various events, book readings, trivia nights, and other local events. While we're here though, let's talk about the book shaped Galaxy Z Fold 5. Firstly, one of the few changes about the design of the device, we now have a hinge that folds completely flat, which makes the device thinner. And it just feels like it's about time, as other manufacturers have kind of been doing that for a while now. They've also managed to shave off a very tiny bit from the length and thickness, which now makes it the lightest and thinnest fold yet. The front and back glass of the phone are now Gorilla Glass Victus 2 instead of Victus Plus, so it should technically be a bit stronger. And that's kinda it for the design changes, really. We have the same IPX water resistance, so no dust resistance is what that X in place of a number usually means. But the 8 means that it can be submerged in up to a meter and a half of water for about half an hour, which is always welcomed. The outer screen is identical to the Fold 4, as is the inner screen, with the outer one still being a little skinnier than I would like. Now, it doesn't have to be as squat as the Pixel Fold or the Find N2, but just more of a normal phone size width-wise would be appreciated by me, as I find it just a little frustrating to type on with two hands, and end up using swiping to type or voice to type mostly, or just opening the phone, even to use the keyboard inside, and, and that's all fine, honestly, but I'd just rather not have to do those things. Again, since the screens are both the same as last year, they are both still 120 hertz adaptive, so they can refresh what's on the screen up to 120 times a second to display smoother animations and scrolling, but it can drop it down when you're doing something with less movement to save power as well. And they are still great screens, really, as usual from Samsung. They also managed to get the inside display brighter, so that it's supposedly now as bright as the S23 Ultra, hitting 1,750 nits peak brightness compared to the 1200 of last year, which is always welcome just to make the screen easier to see. Continue with the book theme today, this is the Morgan Library and Museum, and it started as a personal collection of rare books, manuscripts, and art objects of J. Pierpont Morgan. Yes, J.P. Morgan, the guy who started the investment bank. Mr. Morgan's library, as it was known in his lifetime, was built between 1902 and 1906, adjacent to his New York residence at Madison Ave and 36th Street. After he died, his son Jack realized that the library was too important to remain in private hands and transformed it into a public institution in 1924. In the main library, which is no doubt very impressive, honestly, a lot of bookcases apparently have hidden staircases where you can access the upper levels. Unfortunately, we aren't allowed to go through them, but it's rumored that Morgan used these to magically appear out of nowhere when he hosted parties. Morgan was also a bit of an astrology buff, and the library's ceiling contains zodiac signs that meant something to him personally. Each symbol in the spandrels represents one of the signs. It's also something to do with the Zodiac Club that was formed in 1865, which was an invitation-only gentleman's club that is apparently still in existence today. And apparently some of the wealthiest tycoons and power brokers in history were a part of it. Honestly, it's just a beautiful space filled with a ton of old artifacts. Okay, let's talk about the thing that gives the Galaxy Z Fold 5 its book-like quality. The new hinge is still very solid and easily positionable in any position, so that allows for the benefit that most folding phones inherently have. They can be their own stand. 
So long as you enable flex mode inside the lab section of the phone's settings, you can bend the phone with any app open on it and it'll automatically move the app up to the top of the display and put a semi-useless control panel on the bottom half so that you can now set the phone down on a table and say, watch a video, do a video call, etc., in a laptop-like way. Honestly, as I've mentioned on other videos on folding phones that I've done, it's actually kind of the most intuitive way to force this behavior on a folding phone, regardless of whether you use that control panel or not, because Android itself doesn't really know what to do with folding phones just yet. Now, as I mentioned in my Pixel Fold video, the screen on that is very likely the same as the Fold 4, and probably the Fold 5, but bent the other way. And since most apps are made for phones, and that means a taller than wider aspect ratio, plus combined with the fact that most apps haven't implemented a way to adjust automatically to a more appropriate tablet layout when the width is longer than the height, or even stretch across the screen, the Pixel Fold is a lot of apps that just have black bars on the sides. And so because the Fold 5 does bend the way that it does and the screen is taller than wide, most apps work well enough. But like with the flex mode they built that we've already discussed to force apps to move upward on the display, they also have a feature to force apps to stretch across the screen if needed in the settings as well. Again, it's just one way that Samsung, as I mentioned in other videos before, is kind of ahead when it comes to the software for foldable phones. They've just been making them for a lot longer. Something else that sets apart the Galaxy Z Fold series from other foldables is the fact that it supports an S Pen on the inner display. And this year, we have a new S Pen that's 41% smaller and much closer to the size of the S23 Ultra's S Pen. And it can even work on older pen-enabled folds as well. Now, no, there is still no slot in the phone like the Ultra has, and instead, we again have an S Pen case. Now, that case is way thinner compared to last year, though, thankfully, and is flat now as well. Something to keep in mind that I feel maybe isn't immediately apparent for people new to the Fold series is that the S Pen only works on the inside screen, which is okay. It's the larger screen anyway. But of course, it would be cool if it worked on both so that you don't have to open the phone to use it to jot down things quick. All right, I'm milking the book theme in this one, but right now we're on the 14th floor of the Library Hotel in Midtown at a bar appropriately named Bookmarks. It's a large bar with a wraparound terrace called the Poetry Garden, and there's even a cozy writer's den area complete with a fireplace. The cocktails are, of course, all literary themed. Tequila Mockingbird, anyone? I went for a beer, however as I need to be at least semi-coherent by the end of this video. Book nerds might also appreciate the fact that the 10 guest room floors of the hotel itself are dedicated to the major categories of the Dewey Decimal System. Okay, so lastly for hardware that's changed on the Z Fold 5, we have a new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 compared to the 8 Plus Gen 1 of last year, but more importantly, maybe, it's now optimized for Galaxy devices in a partnership between Qualcomm and Samsung, and I've said this before, but at least kind of potentially seems responsible for the S23 series feeling a bit snappier and has better battery life than I expected it to have, honestly. And we'll talk more about the battery life of this phone in a sec. Now, somewhat disappointingly, I think for most people, is the camera hardware here is identical. Now, the software and processing has changed, and as we've shown many times, the hardware only tells part of the story for photos, and the processing can make a huge difference. In this case, images from the Z Fold 5 look a bit more contrasty and overall look a little bit better, to me at least, and that even goes for the selfie camera as well. And as always, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Oh, and you can though do 8K 30fps now for the camera instead of 8K 24, so, you know, if you wanted to lose 20% of your storage faster, now you can. And again, an inherent benefit of folding phones like this is that you don't have to use the selfie camera and can use the much better cameras and the outside display as your viewfinder. And again, as with all folding phones, you can use it as its own tripod for video and photos as well. Okay. 
calling it a night. And quickly, let's just wrap up our thoughts about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Firstly, the battery is the same size as last year at 4,400 milliamps. And honestly, the Fold 4 battery felt pretty good to me, but this feels similar, maybe a tiny bit better even. But again, the Fold 4 was good, so so is this. Now the battery did die while I was at the bookmarks bar and I recharged it using a battery pack. But here is my battery usage and screen out time for anyone who's curious about that. Just keep in mind, as always, today is not a normal day. It was a real world test day where I used the camera way too much and way more than you probably would. But here is another day. That was a more normal day so that you at least have something to compare it to. Now the Fold 5 is $1799 for the base model, which is the same price as last year. And as usual, there are a ton of trade-in deals that Samsung has. I'll leave a link below to the best deal that I could find on the Fold 5 for anyone who's curious, and I will keep it updated as regularly as I can. Now though, something I think we really need to keep in mind when it comes to the fact that the Fold 5 feels very incrementally upgraded from the Fold 4. Samsung is responsible for 80% of the foldable market. The Z Flip 4 was the most popular folding phone last year with itself alone having 47% of the global market in the year for sales, but the Fold 4 was in second place. There was a total of 14.5 million foldables that were sold globally last year, and 12 million of those were Samsung. 2 million were Huawei, and that was the second closest competitor. That is not a small gap. Now, they needed to do the full cover display on the Flip 5 to match Motorola's Razer Plus, and they needed to do a flat hinge to match other manufacturers, period. But that's it. It seems to me like they just feel the need to match their competitors right now so that, you know, people can't say things like, oh, look at that full screen on the Razer or, you know, the hinges on all these phones are better than yours. They just have to match those things because they're already dominating in the global market. I also want to see them push devices further. Trust me. But until there's any meaningful market share at stake, I think it makes sense for them business-wise. That's not fun, but that's how they think because they're a business to just have small upgrades, at least this year. Here's to hoping that next year we get some more innovation. Maybe the finance team kind of takes some time off. Let the engineers have some fun. Also, let me know what you thought of my weird little format that I do. Been doing it for a long time now, but always appreciate any feedback that you guys have. I enjoy doing it. I hope you still enjoy watching it. Also, subscribe and ding the bell so you can notify when I do new real world tests, where we'll test out other pieces of technology. There's a lot and explore a lot more places. So come along for that. But it has been a long day. I think I'm going to continue the book theme and actually grab a book and read that in bed. Good night. Motorcycle guy, old and ready. Oh, please, more people, more cars, more things, all the things. With less movement. What? Helicopter. Jesus. Cars, cars, lots of cars. This is not going to go well. Mr. Morgan, nope. Stop beeping. Is it also rush hour? It's also rush hour right now. That makes things just a little bit worse. Helicopter. Oh, there he is. Just circle around right where I am. That makes a lot of sense. Even nothing. Just nothing, just beeping for fun. For funsies. Beep, 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 beep. Ah, that's great. Massive truck coming down the side street. Oh, it's a limo. Not sure by what definition that's a limo, but it says it on the side, so it must be true. Oosa. Oosa. I need car. Car, car, car. Every two seconds, car.